Good morning. Good morning. Today I'm going to pull out a note. Yeah, pull out a notebook. So I hope you will too. And I'm going to share my screen with you. And we're going to plan out like two months of travel in Africa. We're going to plan out the budget for two months of travel in Africa. And then we're going to work on how, to, right, first, how much is it going to cost? And then second, we're going to figure out where the money going to come from, okay? How we're going to make the money to cover that travel, okay? That's what we're going to do today. So get your notebooks, get your pens out, get your, get whatever you need, open up a new tab on your computer. It's time to get to work to planning uh, two months of long-term travel. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School and the co-creator of Exodus Summit. I help black women take a career break or a sabbatical. I help black women move abroad. I help black women bop around as a nomad. I help black women start house sitting, okay? If these things sound good to you, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button, please, and turn on notifications. Ring that notification bell so that you will be notified when I post a new video or when I go live. Welcome. Okay. Welcome, friends. Hi, friends. I'm in San Diego for the first, it's the first sunny morning since I got here. I'm in a hotel, but it's my first sunny San Diego morning. And um, I am here for the Independent Book Publishers Association Conference. Breakfast starts at 9. It's 7.03. So we have some things to do before I, so that I can get ready and get down for breakfast. Okay. So, uh, let me take a deep breath. Okay, so what I want to cover today is how to figure out how much long-term travel is going to cost you. You don't have to want to go to Africa. You don't have to want to go to Cape Town and Johannesburg and Namibia and Mauritius, right, and Mo Mo Mozambique. You don't have to want to go to those places for this video to be really helpful for you. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what I do to figure out what something's going to cost right? What long-term travel is going to cost. I've been a long-term traveler since 2015, right? Since 2015, I have not been a person who takes a week vacation, a three-day vacation. I've been a person who packs my bags and knows I'm not returning to exotic Dover, Delaware for six months, right? And this is how I plan it. I'm going to try to share my screen. My hotel should have good enough internet for us to share our screens and us to work alongside each other figuring some things out today. We're gonna to actually figure out the money, okay? Good morning, friends. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Edith. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning, Sandra from Lack to Legacy. Good morning, ASMR with Dar. Good morning, Mary from My Season Life in Panama. Buenos dias. Good morning, Strawberry. Good morning, Deanna. Good morning, Yasharala. Hi, good morning, Amina. Good morning, Erica. Good morning, Lady Senorita or Sarita. I'm not sure. Good morning, Camille. Good morning, Living Life Golden. Good morning, Greta. Good morning, Janet. Good morning, PJ Afro Blue. Good morning, Anita and Auntie Lou. Good morning, Francine and Reggie and Dahlia. Hi, friends. Good morning, Janice and Karen. Let's see if Connie Perry's here yet. Okay. Good morning, Mom. Getting wedding ready. Okay. Enjoy the wedding. All right. My cousin's daughter's getting married today. Happy wedding day. <laughs> All right. Okay, so these are the things we're going to actually walk through things today. Um, so I'm just giving you just a minute to get yourself together, to get what you need to try to figure things out. Okay, so why are we talking two months in Africa? Let's start there. Uh, the Exodus Summit Squad, the get my gang of black women who are planning a sabbatical, a career break, a move abroad, digital nomad life, right? My gang of women just got together in um, Marrakesh, Morocco, a hundred of us, almost a hundred of us actually made the trip, right? A hundred of us got together in Marrakesh, Morocco um, and had a bang up time, had a wonderful time getting to know each other, getting to know Morocco, uh, eating food, doing meetups, uh, doing um, excursions, going to cooking classes, not me, them. Okay, I'm, I would never. Okay, going to cooking classes, going to see waterfalls, going up in hot air balloons, partying, going, riding on camels, riding on ATVs, spending time in the, uh, in the desert, at a pool, exotic oasis in the desert, right? We've done that for 2023, and we are planning another meetup in 2024. If you haven't heard yet, Rashida announced on her YouTube channel 
Rashida Dow, uh, that we are planning uh, Cape Town, South Africa, February 2024. Cape Town, South Africa, February 2024. And uh, I hope that the women who come to that meetup don't show up for the four or five days and then fly back home. I hope that some of these women take this as the jumping off point for their own career breaks and sabbaticals and gap years, for their own exploratory trips, for their own, um, do I want to move here, um, uh, scouting trips, I hope, right? So I think two months is a good amount of time. I'm not saying you have to take two months off next year, but I think you should, okay? If you're, if you're coming, I think you should have a two-month clear calendar where you can be in Southern Africa, right? Sub-Saharan Africa and poke around. I am clear on um, not wanting to live in Africa, but I'm also clear on wanting to visit Africa. Let me show you a few pictures. So South Africa is always on my list of favorites, right? South Africa is always on my list of places that um, I have felt welcome and have felt uh Great. I don't know any other, right? Places where I have loved. I'll say that. South, South Africa is always on my list of places I have loved. Not a place that I would want to live, okay? I'm clear on that. This is Cape Town. This is the wine region in Cape Town. First picture, of course, me in the wine region. But the second poor pay, picture is the same place without me, right? This is the wine region, the Stellenbosch region in Cape Town, South Africa, right? Uh, and then this is a place I've never, I have not yet been. This is the island of Mauritius. Uh, Mauritius, you may have heard of the Seychelles. If you haven't heard of Mauritius, you've probably heard of the Seychelles, right? Uh, very beautiful beaches in, on the Indian Ocean, I believe. Uh, just white powdery sand and turquoise water. Um, not a place that I am presently able to afford on its own but a place that I can afford if I'm going to be in South Africa anyway. You know what I mean? So we're going to talk. Well, maybe I shouldn't say I can't afford it on its own because I haven't done the numbers yet. We're going to do the numbers together right now. Uh, I plan to, let me get back. Let me get myself back on this screen. I don't know how to get myself back on the screen. <laughs> Did I do that? No. Oh, I didn't practice. Show. Let's see. No, I don't want that. I don't know what y'all are saying. Give me just a second. Give me a second. Let me look at me trying to get fancy. All confused. Cancel. Undo. Ha. Okay. Uh, my plan for next year is to be in South Africa in February and Mauritius in March. Maybe I'll dip up to M Namibia, but that'll probably be in February. So South Africa in February, Mauritius in March. That's my travel plan right? Mauritius for the month of March. Mauritius has a digital nomad visa, so I'd like to explore it so that I can talk more to digital nomads who want to go to Mauritius about what it's like there. You know, how is the internet really? Uh, they say it's really good. Uh, how is the food really? I imagine it's really good. How are the people, right? How will you like Mauritius? I'd like to go there and scope it out so that I can talk more about it here on this channel as a location for people who want to take some time on an island and live their digital nomad life without the cost of like a Turks and Caicos, right? I think the living part is probably less than Turks and Caicos, even if the traveling there part is more expensive. So I'd like to work on that. And so that's why I'm interested in spending an entire month in Mauritius. Okay, yeah, Suzanne, take your time. That's right, take your time. We don't have to do things in a hurry. If work is not the boss of us, hold on, I need this water. My plan for you, <laughs> I'm not the boss of you either, <laughs> but my plan for you is to have a life where work is not the boss of you and work doesn't di dictate where you are, where you can go, how long you can stay, right? That's why we quitting our jobs next year and we spend two months in Africa, okay? <laughs> Let's get with the program, please, friend, okay? That's what we're doing next year, at least two months. So, um, yeah, my plan is... Cape Town and Johannesburg, and maybe Namibia, I know this is a different country, but maybe Namibia for the first month, and then the entire month of March in um, Mauritius. Eileen Sophia says, Mauritius is my extended stay destination. Okay, well give us, 
Well, no. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. We're going to get some information together. We're going to get some information about it. Okay, so... I'm sorry. I'm just scrolling through the chat real quickly to see if there's anything that I need to answer before I um, uh, get into the money. Okay, before I share my screen and can't see your comments for a while. I plan, Odea, I plan to visit Mauritius early 2024 because my granddaughter and her family moved there about a year ago. And I've yet to visit her there. Maybe I'll meet you. Wonderful. Ah, okay. Is your granddaughter there on the digital nomad visa? Do you know? Is that, is that how she ended up there? That's wonderful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Kemi says, my hub, husband and kids have become the boss of me. Girl, abandon them for two months, okay? <laughs> We're going to abandon them. <laughs> two months of abandonment. How bad could it be? All right. So um, I'm just going to share my screen, and we're going to get to work. Here are some things that we need to figure out. All right. We need to figure out a flight from I'm going to put in flights from New York City to Cape Town round trip, okay? What I think I'm going to do is fly round trip New York City to Cape Town, and then I need an inter-country flight from Cape Town to Johannesburg, and then a flight from Johannesburg to Mauritius, but then I'll probably fly back out of Cape Town. So you can do, I'm going to do that for the purposes of figuring out the money, um, just to make it easier, because we don't want to do eight Google search flights. Eight, we don't want to do eight flight searches today. So that's just to simplify things. What I probably would end up doing if the Cape Town meetup becomes a thing. Okay, so I didn't say this. Nothing has been planned. Nothing is organized for Cape Town. Anything could change. We could change the location. We could change the date. We could change the location and the date. Okay, nothing is firm. I'm not buying any tickets today. I'm just searching for some things. Okay, but it's easier for me to do that. But to in the search portion, but when it's time to buy the ticket, I would probably buy a ticket from Cape New York to Cape Town, and then the return from Johannesburg to New York. To New York, uh, right? You can do a multi-destination ticket. Okay. So first, we're going to figure out some flight prices. We're going to do some searches together. Then we're going to figure out what accommodation costs, um, and then we're going to throw in some extra numbers to embiggen our number. Right? Make sure that we have enough of a budget that'll cover us and we're not going to go hungry while we're in South Africa and wherever else we're going. And then we're going to move into part two of the video. Where's that money going to come from? Okay. We're going to figure out how to get that money together. All right. Anita says, what's a digital nomad visa? So to, mo to go to other countries you e with a U.S. passport, there are quite a few countries that will let you in for a, as a tourist for a small amount of time, three months, Sometimes two months, two months, three months, sometimes six months, like Mexico. If you want to stay a little longer, you need residency. If you want to stay longer or if you want to work while you're there, if you want to legally be able to work while you're there, because on a, on a tourist visa, you're supposed to be there for tourist purposes, not for work purposes. Right? So if you want to do the, if you want to stay longer and, and or you want to legally work while you're someplace, you need the, um, some sort of residency. Now that people are working remotely, some countries have developed a residency res, residency permit. This, these things in the background are annoying me, but I can't do anything about it. This is my bag for the conference I'm here for. It's just annoying me. Okay, some countries have come up with an intermediate thing, right? So you're not there as a tourist. You're there as a, at, on temporary residency, but it's as a digital nomad, so you have that visa. Um, Mauritius has a digital nomad visa that's free to apply for, and you can stay in the country for a year, and you can work remotely legally, right? You can't work for a company based in Mauritius, but you can do whatever job you do legally there, right? Some countries are really sticklers about tourists not working while they're there, even if you're working online, even if you don't work in the country physically, you're just working on the computer, uh, they're still like, no, when you're a tourist, you're supposed to only do tourist things. So... A, a Mauritius has a digital nomad visa that I'm really excited about. Uh, oh, I talked to someone not too long ago who's on her way there on the digital nomad visa. If you're here, out yourself. Okay. I don't remember who it was. I don't remember your name. I remember the conversation, but not your name. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's, it's, I did a whole video about countries where black women digital nomads are going and Mauritius 
is one of the countries on that list. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and figure some things out. I'm going to try to figure out. I don't think I know how to split share my screen. Updates. I don't care about the updates. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm going to try to share my screen in a reasonable. Let's see. Okay, I think I did it. Okay. So for flights, I like Momondo. And you can see if you can see some flights already populated, right? Some searches already populated. So I like Momondo for flight searches. Other people like Skyscanner and even Google Flights. Uh, people like Google Flights and Google Flights, according to someone I follow on Instagram, Google Flights now has protection. So if you book your trip through Google Flights and the flight price goes down, they will give you the difference. Okay. But I don't know nothing about that. Okay. I happen to have been stuck in the Spanish Momondo version because I was searching in Costa Rica and El Salvador lately. And uh, I haven't switched myself out of, so it says I'm in the U.S., but it's still Spanish. So <laughs> your momondo.com is not going to be in Spanish, but I just leave it because I don't care, okay? I just leave it because it makes me feel like I'm learning Spanish. So I would fly from New York City, and I just put in New York City because I don't care about JFK or Newark Airport or uh, the other one. I'll fly from JFK or Newark. And uh, sometimes I even put in Washington as well, because I'll fly from DC, I'll fly from um, Dulles, I'll fly from BWI, right? And I want to go into Cape Town, Ciudad del Cabo in Espanol. Um, I'm going to put my dates, my comment box is covering the thing. So I'm going to go ahead and set my dates for this um, as February through March 2024. I know that I'm going to a conference this week in January in Puerto Rico. Uh, so probably right after the conference, I'll head back to Delaware. I wanted to go to um, Grenada afterwards, but I don't think I'm going to have time. If I do, Grenada will have to be before the conference, not after. I'm giving you more information than you asked me for. You didn't ask me for any of this, okay? So I'm just going to put in a flight February returning April 1st, right? February and March is when I want to be out, out and about. And then uh, we're looking at flight prices. So I'm going to write down um, to Cape Town. Okay, we're looking at flight prices. Here's the thing that you have to do on Momondo during these COVID times. We're still in COVID times. We're still in times when airlines cancel and shuffle things without hesitation. And so I am not right now booking through third party sites. I only book through the airline. So I check that box at the bottom that says only through airlines. Solo aerolíneas in español. I probably should have changed this to English. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but only airlines because I don't want to book through a third party site and then have the airline change the flight and the third party can't help me. So this is the thing I started doing during COVID. I used to not care at all if I booked through a third-party site, like uh, cheap, what's it called, cheapflights.com and all that, right? Now I only book through airlines. Um, okay, now this is not horrible. Round trip to Cape Town, uh, uh, like I've seen worse, you know, especially flights are really expensive. Some women last year paid more than $800 just to get from Atlanta to Cancun, <laughs> right? Flights have been crazy since the pandemic. So $1,400 to South Africa, and this is a direct flight on United from Dulles? I mean, these prices are not horrible. So we're going to write down $1,400 for that round-trip flight. Now, I am doing uh, bougie girl things now, and I am flying business class, okay? So we're going to write that price down for a coach ticket, but I'm flying business class. We're just going to have to make the money, right? <laughs> like, if what you're talking about is how, if part two of this video is how to make the money, let's go ahead and figure it out. Okay, let's figure it out. So still we're with only booking through the airlines. Let me make sure sometimes that'll uncheck itself. Yep. Okay, only booking through the airlines, not third parties. And I don't want two, two layovers. 
I want direct or one-stop flights, which is possible, as we just saw. All right, so we're talking 6,000. I saw flights for 5,000 not too long ago through Emirates, but they're not showing up here right now. I wonder why. Okay, so but $6,000, right, for a business class ticket with a stop in Munich? Yeah, that's boring. This is Frankfurt? That's boring. Lufthansa, right? Lufthansa stops. A lot of Lufthansa flights go through Frankfurt, like a lot of Delta flights go through uh, Atlanta. Uh, of course, British Airways stop through London Heathrow. I wonder why we're not seeing um, Emirates. So I'm going to click over here. Okay, and see what's happening. Oh, it's not even highlighted. I wonder why. I'm a, okay, so later I'll go to, directly to Emirates, but I did see some flights on Emirates for that price, for 5000 something. Lufthansa, I mean, I would do it. I would prefer on this trip to go through um, Dubai on Emirates than Germany in February, right? I don't want to stop in Germany in February. I don't care. I don't want to wear a coat. Right. Once I get on the flight, I don't want to wear a coat. Yeah. Mary says Emirates doesn't always show up on these apps, on these things. It did show up the other day, but I do. Yeah. So that's correct. It did show up the other day. So I'm going to have to um, do that manually. So for now, we'll put down 6000 for the business class flight, 6100 for the business class flight. But I saw 5200 on Emirates with a stop in Dubai, which is what I would prefer. Global Granny is Anita. Hi, Anita. She says Lufthansa has a great lounge and good customer service. Don't sleep on them. Okay. So, okay. I, yes. Yes. It's a wonderful airline. I, hello, Lufthansa. <laughs> I don't mean to down, I don't mean to talk down the airline. I just mean the stop in Frankfurt. If for the same price, if I could stop in Frankfurt or I could stop in Dubai, I'm going to pick Dubai. In February, <laughs> right? Y'all know, okay? Y'all get it. Boycott winter. I want to boycott winter, baby. Okay? I hope. Listen, so for some of y'all, this last winter was your last winter, okay? Last winter was your last time experiencing winter weather against your will, okay? We're going to get you out of here. We're going to get you in Africa next winter. <laughs> winter after that, you're going to be wherever. So, okay? This is what we're talking about. This is what we're doing, okay? So that was that first flight. We also need a flight, and these are from various airports, right? Flying into Newark, out of JFK. I don't mind that. That doesn't matter to me. Um, but I really like Momondo for these kinds of searches. But as Mary told us, there are um, some airlines may not always show up on third parties. Like Southwest, right? Y'all know that. Those of you who fly Southwest Airlines, you know that's not helpful. I mean, that's not, um, it doesn't show up on third party sites either. So this is just for research purposes. Now we know $6,100 for business class, $1,400 for a coach ticket, which I think is a really good um, thing. I'm not using a VPN, Eleanor. I just happened to get stuck on Momondo's website. They have me as the person who lives in Costa Rica, and I have not corrected them. So that's why things are in Spanish. Uh, you can use a VPN. People do recommend using a VPN when it's time to buy your tickets. Um, and use your VPN and say you're in a country with uh, a country that your airline would consider a, a country they would want to give discount prices to, right? Like when I was in El Salvador, the flight from El Salvador back to the U.S. was cheaper than when I looked at the price when I was in the U.S., right? So anyway, anyway. I'm getting, I think we're going too much into stuff that y'all don't care about, okay? But we do, I do proclaim that last winter was your last winter of winter weather, okay? We're not doing that to ourselves anymore. Okay, now we need to look up a flight from Cape Town to Johannesburg and then Johannesburg to um, Mauritius for me, right? Some of y'all don't want to go to Mauritius. I'm going to do... Right now, we'll do round trip Cape Town to Johannesburg just because, right? We're just getting a big number. It doesn't, it's okay. It may be cheaper to do these one way, right? One way Cape Town to Johannesburg. But now we're just trying to figure out a dollar figure, OK? 
Okay, Cape Town jo to Johannesburg, and we'll say we'll do that sometime uh, the second week. I don't know, right? This is just for research purposes. Um, and we're going to get two prices for this as well. We're going to get a round trip business class and a round trip um, coach ticket price. Airlink is an airline I've never flown, and it's called the Airlink and Air Mauritius are the two are labeled the two best airlines in Africa. Two best airlines in Africa, in Southern, in Sub-Saharan Africa are Airlink and Air Mauritius. Okay, so you see it, Cape Town to Johannesburg, uh, business class, for hundo. Oh, wait, 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 but we gotta do my thing. Let me move this. But we only wanna see the price as listed through the airline, not through a third party. Okay. All right, 450 for direct flight, business class, and we'll change this to economy class. One, one more again. Every time I have to reselect this. I wish Momondo would let you put that on permanently, but I'm sure they're not going to do that because they make their money through um, these third-party sites. All right. So Airlink, when you see an airline that you're not into, that you're not that you don't know anything about, I go to airline safety ratings and check them out. So how do I know that Airlink is one of the best? Airlines in Sub-Saharan Africa, I looked them up, right? I looked up Air Link and Air Mauritius, and they gave a rating. Um, I do that because I learned this when I was traveling in Southeast Asia. Those small airlines, not always safe. And I don't want to go out like that, okay? I'll pay more money to live, okay? And so I looked up, I look up these regional carriers just to make sure that they get a good rating, a six or seven on safety and a four or five on product rating to me says, okay, I'm going to book that flight, right? So seven out of seven safety, five out of seven product rating. Airlink has new planes, right? Good pro good planes and good, a great safety record, so I'm down with them. I do that when I see a regional airline. This is something that, like I said, I learned in, um, this is the thing I'm on now. I learned that in, um, is this the one we're using? I learned that in um, Asia, in Southeast Asia. So I only know about Airlink because of that. And then I went to YouTube and watched videos of people being like, this is one of the best airlines in Sub-Saharan Africa. If it wasn't, if it had a poor rating, I wouldn't use it, right? I wouldn't, I don't, I don't do that. I don't play, I don't play like that, okay? And then we're going to look up flights from Johannesburg to Mauritius. Port Louis, Mauritius. And I'm just going to do March 1st through 30th. Okay, economy class. We want to book with an airline, not through a third party site. So we want their pricing, not like eDreams. I've bought tickets with eDreams before. I've bought flight, uh, tickets through cheap ticket deals, right? I've, I'm, but I don't want to do that now. Only the airlines, only the direct airlines. Okay, this is an economy class ticket from Johannesburg to. Mauritius, direct on Air Mauritius, one of the best airlines, it, the top two, right? Airlink and Air Mauritius are the top two airlines. So 540, 580 for economy, so 600 for economy. Emirates, if you wanted to pass back through Dubai, $1,200. And then let's look at business class. For this, for short flights, business class isn't always necessary, isn't worth it, isn't always worth it is what I'm saying. But 1,073 is fine, so we're going to write down 1,100. All right, for Air Mauritius, but again, okay, that's through a third party. What is it through the airline? Yeah, 1,100. Okay, so we've got the flights that we need for our two months. We've got the prices for the flights. What did we come up with? 2,125 for coach and six, seven plus five, six, seven. 
7700 for business class. Okay? How are we feeling about this? I'm going to come back on the screen before we start looking at accommodation just because I miss you. Ha, huh, back on the screen, right? All right, so how are we feeling about this? Any questions about the flight searching things? Yeah, yes, USD. I'm searching in US, even though it's in Spanish, I'm searching in US dollars, yes. Okay, any questions? Hey, LaRonda. I'm just looking. You're welcome. We share over here. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, Karen. Karen says, tell me about the class differences, please. Uh, business class flights first give you access to the first they give you access to uh, a expedited check-in right business class flights when you get to the airport and you have to check in and you have to give them your luggage and all of that generally you're in a, a much shorter line although at london heathrow british airways put us in the same line and then they were like oh actually you can act now then when the line got too long then they pulled us out of the line and put us in the first class line they had first class not first in business anyway you, hopefully you can get some expedited check-in. Your bags are tagged priority. You have that priority ticket. So your bags are supposed to come on and off the conveyor belt first. Uh, it's time saving in that regard. Uh, when you're going through the airport, I don't have any kind of global entry or whatever because most of my travel is out of the US and global entry is not gonna help me, I don't think. Uh, so I don't have any of that, but I do get fast tracked. Um, into a different line for security in some airports. Some airports separate out the premier fly, the premier ticket flyers uh, from the economy ticket flyers, and even the security thing is fast tracked. Um, and then you get the lounge, a comfortable place to sit and wait for your flight. It doesn't sound that magical, but it is. <laughs> Airport lounges can be magical. I've had a couple of experiences where I'm like, this lounge sucks. But for the most part, airport lounges are amazing. Um, I don't think I could get a good picture of it. Anyway, uh, the, uh, the British Airways lounge at Heathrow, the one that I was in in Heathrow Airport, top tier. It's got to be, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't look up the best lounges in the world. But that London Heathrow uh, British Airways lounge was amazing. The amount, the selection of food and drinks uh, and coffee and whatever, the amount of seating spaces, the calm, quiet atmosphere. Um, sitting in the regular airport gate waiting for a flight is just stressful. Even when your flight is on time and even when the airline is communicating with you, it's a stressful situation. Sitting in the lounge, not stressful. And then you get on the plane, you get uh, bigger seating, right? My first, my business class flight from to and from London, lay flat seat. 11 hour flight in a bed. <laughs> 11 hour flight in a bed. I flew from London to San Diego in that lay flat seat. And I mean, I can't imagine uh, how much better the experience could have been, right? There's how, there's how could it have been better? I'm getting real food on the flight. Uh, they give you like real dishes, real china and silverware, which is not all that and real, like the real glassware, which is not worth the money. But the lay flat seat is worth the money. If not all business class flights are lay flat, right? Uh, but if your business class ticket is com comes with a lay flat seat, I mean, how does it get any better? How? <laughs> Tell me how. My parents and I flew from uh, Newark, New Jersey, EWR Airport to London. We all wanted a window seat, so we weren't sitting together. My parents were across the aisle from each other. I'm like eight rows back. Um, and every and I kept getting up and looking at him, especially my dad, right? Getting up and looking at him. You all right? Everything okay? He's just chilling, right? Whereas the flight was, what, five or six hours? Five or six hours in a coach seat? Not a nice, not the best experience. I've done a whole lot of them. I've flown to and from Vietnam coach, right? To and from Japan, to and from Malaysia, coach, right? I'm not saying don't fly coach. I'm saying it's an experience <laughs> and you're not going back. Once you book 
your first business class ticket, you're not going back. I don't care. I don't care. I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine. All the drinks are free. Miss Perry, can I get you some champagne before we take off? Yes. Thank you. Rashida said, get two. <laughs> Rashida, said, <laughs> Rashida said, when they ask you if you want something, the answer is two or both, right? Do you want Miss Perry? Do you want champagne or orange juice? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's the difference. Um, I've had some great lounge experiences. I've had some not great lounge experience, right? That private cubicle on a long flight you're not going to get a better experience, right? And this is why I want to fly Emirates, because they are one of the top, top, top airlines there is. Emirates. Uh, so Japan, was it Japan? No. ANA, the J Japan's airline, right? Emirates and the other one that goes to Doha. Those are usually the top three airlines in the world. I want to fly Emirates because they're rated better than the experience I already had, which was an A plus. Show me. Okay. Show me. Karen's down. Karen said, okay, you, enough said. Let's get the money. <laughs> we fly business class now. Let's get the money. Okay. I'm down with it. Okay. Okay. So next we need to talk about accommodation. This is a little bit harder to figure out tech, like, because the meetup is going to come with a hotel that you're going to want to book to be with us during the meetup. Uh, you're not going to be able to get a precise number today, but what you can get is a ballpark figure. We can get a ballpark figure for what accommodation for two months in Africa will cost, and then the meetup and accommodations will be a little bit extra than that, from that, right? For this, I'm going to look at Airbnbs. Um, I'm going to look at Airbnbs for the price of accommodation for two months, to one month in Cape Town, one month in uh, Mauritius, and then we'll also look at a hotel in Cape Town. Well, I don't know. I don't want to do that part. I don't want to do that part because I don't want someone to misunderstand. Qatar Airways, thank you. That's the one. Qatar, Emirates, ANA in Japan, they're always at the top. They're three, three of the top five airlines always. I want to see what makes them so much better than what I've already experienced, right? Show me. Show me the light, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Show me the light. Okay. Um, so let's just go ahead and look at some Airbnbs, shall we? Okay, uh, Cape Town. So if you're talking about making this a sabbatical, which I hope you are, okay, you may not want to stay in Cape Town proper. Africa's big <laughs> and there's some beautiful, you, I have no qualms, right, with just going to a place because the Airbnb is beautiful. That's how we, my mom and I ended up in that beautiful place in Costa Rica called Cartago in the state of Cart in the whatever, province of Cartago, in the town of whatever. I don't even know what the town was called. Just because the Airbnb was beautiful. Okay, I ha there is no shame in my game for just going to a place because it looks like a good place to sabbatical. Okay? So even though we're going to put Cape Town in our search, I would widen it, right? I would widen it on the map. But let's look on our map for a month in Cape Town. Let's go February Oh, there's an extra day next year. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> More time for sabbaticaling. All right, so Airbnb uses intelligence to try to know what kind of stuff I like. So the first things it's showing are the kind of things that it knows of the iBook, right? But you may want something a little more or less, you know? You may want something with play around is what I'm saying. But these first few results give me good hope, right? $1,700 for a whole month. $1,300 for a whole month. This looks like it might be a tiny house, but on the water, right? It looks adorable. Um, an apartment in the city, which is not very sabbatical-like, but maybe. Maybe your sabbatical is city life, right? $1,600 for a whole month. Um, 
you can see on Airbnb that these are up in Cape Town, Cape Town. But let's look on the map. Let's get the map to this. No, 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 no. Let's include some. Let, what I want to do is include some safari stays. Let's see. How do we do that? Do we need to do a separate search for safari time? Maybe. St. Helena Bay is north of Cape Town. Look at that beautiful view, $4,000 per month. Anyway, y'all know how to use Airbnb, I think. Uh, I don't I don't know St. Helena Bay, but these Airbnbs there make it seem like it's a beautiful place. Look at that view. Okay, these are three, three beds, so probably two bedrooms, but three beds. Okay. Odea, I stayed in the Tamburst Kloof neighborhood in Cape Town. Beautiful views of Table Mountain, but next time I would stay near the beach in Camps Bay. I hung out when I was in Cape Town. I hung out with a woman who was like, Cape, Camps Bay or nothing, right? She, she was like, listen, we got to get to Camps Bay. Rachel, Rachel, we got to get to Camps Bay. We got to get to Camps Bay. Let's look specifically at Camps Bay. Right, she was like, forget all this other place, all these other places. Let's look at Camps Bay. Oh, look at these. Okay. Right? So they know how Airbnb knows how to get me. Okay, so this is five thousand dollars a month before the fees. Remember, the Airbnb is adding taxes and fees and all of that on there. Right? They know how to get me, but that's beautiful. Right? That looks like a sabbatical. <laughs> that's if an Airbnb can look like a sabbatical, this one has done it, right? Camps Bay. Here we go, $2,400 for a month. I, I have a thing against this personal thing. I have a thing against um, non-sofa sofas, right? I want a sofa that's an actual sofa, not like a pad on a platform. But that's me, right? So you look at the things that you like for your sabbatical. I want to lay on the sofa a lot during my time. And so I need um, a real sofa. Let's put in a filter that y'all might be interested in. Let's see. We want one bedroom, unless you're okay with the studio, which you might be, right? You might be okay with the studio. We want good Wi-Fi. I like, uh, actually, no, I don't care about a washer dryer because I'm sending my laundry out for the most part. Um. Sometimes I turn super host on. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's just there are newer hosts who are not super hosts yet. But let's go ahead and turn on super host. And a pool. Can we look for a pool as well? That may take the price up significantly. Show more. Pool. We don't need a pool if we're on the beach, but maybe. But we, you know, let's live. All right, so we're seeing three to five thousand dollars for the month. There's two thousand dollars for the month. Okay, and then if you want to do this more budget friendly, I would do some shared spaces instead of the house only. Because, and I would take out the pool. Um, rooms. I, I stayed in a lovely home in, this was in Johannesburg, where they had a, share, a little private suite, which was amazing, right? So it doesn't have to be the only, only, I'm not afraid of a shared space on the internet. Okay, so share, we see shared spaces we're getting closer to one thousand, one and two thousand dollars for the whole month. All right, and then if you're on trusted house sitters, you know, look for some house sits. South Africa is a place where you can find house sits. This looks like it's up in that place, up in that place that I said I'd never heard of, St. Helens. This looks like it's St. Helens on the map. And shared home, sixteen hundred dollars. It's beautiful. Look at that view. Look at that, look at that, look at that, okay? So we're going to write down $2,500 for the Cape Town month, okay? I'm just going to write down $2,500. There were some higher, there were some lower. 
but I think we can do it for 2,500. And then we're going to go to, where are we at? Beachfront with a balcony, says Abba. Okay. I don't know how to, I can't get you, I can't get you and the thing on the screen at the same time, I don't think. Yeah, right, solar or a generator for load shedding. So you're going to have to read, South Africa has blackouts called load shedding. They intentionally black out places. And February is their summertime when the demand on electricity is high. And so you're going to need to make sure, you're going to need to read the listings in South Africa and make sure that you're in a place that has a plan for the load shed periods. If you're in a residential area, you're going to need to make sure that um, you have, either that you have electricity when the blackout happens because you have a generator, or you just don't care. If you're on sabbatical, maybe you don't care that there are three hours every other day where you don't have electricity. Like seriously, maybe you don't care. Uh, if we do on sabbatical, if you're not working, if you're on sabbatical stuff, okay, it's read a book time. <laughs> do shared spaces mean you share a bathroom? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. You have to read the listing. I've done that. I've, before COVID, I had no problem with shared spaces with a shared bathroom, right? You don't keep your stuff in the bathroom, but it's a shared bathroom. Um, sometimes, but yes, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes it, it'll just mean the shared kitchen and, and, and um, like a live, shared living space, but your own bedroom and bathroom, and sometimes you're sharing the bathroom. All right, maybe we'll put down two figures for that too. We'll put down 2,500 and we'll put down 4,000, okay, for the month. And then we want to go to the next month in Mauritius. All right, y'all, if, if I find a place I want, don't take it. Don't take it out from under me. <laughs> if we find a place in Mauritius in March, don't go get it out from under me. All right. So this, these are shared spaces. Mauritius is an island. It's beautiful. It's a very popular place with the rich traveler, the wealthy traveler. It's like the Seychelles. It's, I think they're neighbors. Mauritius and the Seychelles are neighbors, I think. Um, and so this is not a budget-friendly place, okay? We're coming up with a price for it, but that doesn't mean this is a budget-friendly place. So these are rooms in houses, uh, and we see these prices are, ex these are, these are high prices, right? $3,000 for a room, right? This is Mauritius. So this may be Mauritius won't be the answer if budget is your thing. Oh, that's beautiful though, wow. Right, so maybe Mauritius isn't your answer if you need a more budget-friendly destination. Uh, but it's beautiful, and this is, you can make this a, a once in a, I don't like once in a lifetime, but like once in a year, <laughs> once in a year type thing. All right, so we're seeing $3,000 for shared space, and then we want to change our filter to um, entire space, and These prices, no, we're still on room. All types, homes, all types. Okay, I'm going to put in a two-bedroom, at least. I don't usually book for guests, but I'm going to put in two-bedroom just in case, because I have a feeling. <laughs> a guest or two might stop in, right? Uh, Mauritius is small enough that I don't think I have a preference on where in the island I am. So we sold 3000 for rooms, and here we're seeing 3600 for the entire space. So that's pretty hopeful. I feel pretty good about this being a place where I'll be spending the month. Okay, so we're going to put down 5000 Is this thing turned on? Yeah, $5,000 for the month for Mauritius. Okay. So we've got our accommodation coming in between, okay, and, and please remember that the, the numbers that I'm coming up with, you can do accommodation a lot lower. Uh, some of y'all are house sitters, right? So just, I'm about to announce $5,500 for two months accommodation between Cape Town and Mauritius, but that doesn't mean it can't be done a whole lot cheaper, okay? And 9000 for the top end, or not top end, but like my, my top end. Okay, so then the next thing I want to figure out, I need to go back on the screen and then look at my list as well. 
Next thing I would like to figure out. Okay, so I, I figured out a couple of things ahead of time. For my notes. Okay, so I wrote down a couple of numbers ahead of time. I rented a car my entire time, not my entire time. I rented a car in South Africa to go from place to place because it's like Costa Rica, where it's not the easiest place to get a bus from one to the other, as far as I could tell. A tourist level bus, right? A bus where you're going to be comfortable like in Mexico. The Me Mexico has spoiled me for bus travel anyway. But I drove places. I wouldn't do that again. First of all, I had a terrible experience with Hertz. Okay, I had a terrible experience with Hertz. They were just the worst. Uh, and and falsified, <laughs> falsified things. That's a thing that Hertz has a reputation of doing. I didn't know at the time. So instead, I would just plan to fly from city to city Right. We, so we've already looked at a flight from Cape Town to Johannesburg and I would plan to Uber. Right. I put in four days a week. Four Uber trip. No. What did I write? Four Uber trips per week. At fifteen dollars per trip. Is that round trip, though? <laughs> I don't know. I, I came up with a five hundred dollar Uber budget. What I wrote down was four trips per week times eight weeks times $15. So 32 Ubers over the eight week period, $15 per Uber trip. I think that's what I calculated as a round trip Uber, but that number is just based on memory, just based on me remembering that I spent about five to $7 per Uber trip in Johannesburg, right? Totally 2017 numbers, okay. I wrote down a $500 Uber budget. I don't know. Maybe you would double that. I don't know. It still is less than renting a car for a, for eight weeks, I think, especially if you need one way rentals. What got me was the one way one way rentals. But maybe maybe it's not. OK, what I wrote down for food. I don't know. Right. I'll just be making up numbers. Fifty dollars a day for 60 days. So three thousand dollars for food. Where y'all at? What y'all say about that? Yeah, so Angela is in Mexico, Primera Plus, the bus company spoils you, right? You can get anywhere in Mexico on Primera Plus or the other one that has the single row, right? You don't even have a neighbor. One row on one side, two rows, two seats on the other. Uh, I can't remember what they're called, right? Mexico spoils me for buses. It's really hard to take buses in other places now, seriously. Buses in Mexico are better than trains in the United States, like... It's ridiculous. Okay. And drivers. Okay. Monica says a driver without even Ubering, you can just get a driver in Cape Town inexpensively. So if the 500 to a thousand dollar budget is probably semi-realistic as a person who doesn't leave the house every day. Four Uber trips a week for me is good. I'm good. Right. Four Uber trips is is an overstatement. I'm not leaving the house four times a week, especially if I can walk to a grocery store or a, or a whatever, walk to the walk to a restaurant or a coffee shop. I'm not Ubering four times a week. I've been here in this hotel for th four days now. I've left once. OK, I'm a hermit. So. Okay, so back to transportation costs and food costs. I don't know. I made up a number, okay? Yeah. Uh, Jesse says, I rented a car for about $500 for two weeks, right? So we're talking $500 in Ubering for six months, for, for eight weeks, for two months. Um, and then food. So y'all don't feel any way about my $3,000 food budget? I don't feel any way about it. I don't know. This is the thing we know we're going to have to build in a buffer because <laughs> I don't know. I just made up a number. $50 a day for 60 days. Some days you're just going to eat stuff from the grocery store. Some days you're going to go out and have a $150 meal, right? Mm -hmm. Sounds $3,000 sounds right. And then I made a shopping budget, okay, because you're going to come back from Johannesburg with dresses, with purses, with jewelry, with paintings, right? You're going to come back with art. You're going to come back with things. I put down $500. I don't know how realistic that is. I don't know. I feel like I spent less than $500 in Johannesburg, and I came back with stuff to sell. I bought a whole suitcase worth of purses and jewelry to sell, 
And I don't think I spent $500 on it. Right? So you getting your own personal stuff, you can get better quality stuff than I got for $500, I think. So those are the numbers that I came up with. Yeah, food is hard to measure as a person who doesn't measure, right? If I had been tracking all along, if I, you know, then I would know what I spend on food in various places, but I don't, I'm not tracking all that. So <clears throat> what we've got on our budget right now, transportation or flights, not transportation, flights, accommodation, Uber, food, shopping. Okay, so our number is... It's a big number, okay? It's a big number. 2125 for flights plus 5500 for accommodation for 2 months plus $4000 for Uber, food and shopping. It's a big number. Okay? This is $11,625. This is without flying business class. This is without, right, this is a big number, okay? But this is two months without doing things on a budget, okay? Don't be alarmed, okay? You don't have to do it that way, but this is a number, okay? <laughs> this is a number, all right? And then with the business class stuff and the more expensive place and the 7,700 plus 9,000 for accommodation plus 4,000 for other things, $20,700, okay? All right, now where are we going to get the money? Uh, let's talk about some things that you, uh, that I know some of you in the community are already doing. I know, okay? Don't be alarmed. Yvonne said this is not my budget, okay? This is a budget, not your budget, okay? The, you can spend a month in Cape Town without spending $2,500 on accommodation. I stayed in hostels in Cape Town. I, I mean, I stayed in, I know, I told you I spent time with Rachel, who was like, we got to get to Camp Spay. We got to get to Camp Spay. I met Rachel in a hospital. I, I mean, in a hostel. I slept in that bed and she slept in that bed, right? We, we slept in the same room in a hostel. There were three of us, three black women in one room sleeping side by side by side, Okay. I slept in hostels in Cape Town, okay? And I probably, back then, I was on a $16 a day budget for hostels. So that's probably what I spent. So maybe $20 a day now for a hostel, okay? Okay, all right. Don't be alarmed. I'm telling you, okay, don't be alarmed. Karen says, I think we can do this for about $12,000, okay? Okay? But don't be, I stayed in hostels. You don't have to go, I'm telling you, Mauritius is not a budget place. It's like the Seychelles, a little bit less expensive than the Seychelles but it's not a budget place. If Mauritius doesn't fit, go to Mozambique, which is much more budget friendly, still right on the Indian Ocean, right? Mozambique, okay, I don't want to scare people away, okay? We've got two figures. We've got a high end and a higher end, 11,000 for a high end, 11.6 six, six for high end, 20,000 for a higher end, okay? Okay, <laughs> don't be alarmed, but you can stay in a hostel in, in South Africa, I'm sure, for at least, if not $20 a day, $25 a day. Let's, let's look at that real quick. Let's look at that. Y'all want to look at some hostels? Let's look at that. I'm not sharing my screen, though. Share. Hostel World. Okay, let's go over to hostelworld.com and look at Cape Town. I stayed in hostels in Cape Town and Johannesburg. And I stayed in hostels almost everywhere. And then, I, like I said, I drove from, Johannes, from Cape Town to Johannesburg, and I stayed in a hostel in, like, the middle of nowhere. There were even hostels just because I'm driving from place to place, and I only want to drive six hours a day. I'm just going to stop here. And I still spent time in hostels. Uh, is it worth it to scroll that far? I went too far. Let's look at for a hostel for two weeks. Some hostels have, like, a time limit. So we're going to put two weeks just in case so we don't run out of the... Um, so we don't get the host so we don't get excluded from some hostels. Curiosity, I stayed in Curiosity, one of the Curiosity hostels, they are brand. $24 a night for a dorm room. Uh, $29 a night for a private room at Zebra Crossing. I don't recognize any of these other names. I stayed in quite a few. Dorm room for $20 a night, okay. 
Okay. All right. So y'all see. Let's look at the curiosity. I don't think I stayed in curiosity in Cape Town. I think the curiosity that I stayed in was in um, Johannesburg. But let's look. I don't see the one that I don't see one that looks like one that I would have that I remember staying in. None of these look familiar to me. But let's look at Curiosity. They're a brand that is uh, popular. Okay. So this is a private room. Private room. Dorm room. Right? I've done many, many, many of these. Okay? Many, many, many. Okay, shared kitchen. This is that's a private room bathroom. Shared kitchen space. I like to book hostels where the where the dorm where the beds are either not bunk beds. Sometimes you're in a hostel, they're just beds like here in this hotel, right? In my hotel room, I have two two whatever they are, two queens or whatever. Uh, and then sometimes, or I like to stay in the ones where they're more like, um, like cubbies or whatever, like cubicles. Okay. Okay. I don't want to scare anyone away with that figure. Okay. Because that $11,000 figure is more than I spent for my, that's almost what I spent for an entire year of travel. So I know that for two months is a lot. Okay. We're just doing some things. Okay, let's talk about the money though. Let's talk about where the money's coming from. Here are some ways that I think some of you are already making some money. Anybody already making money on Cambly, tutoring people in English online? Anybody wanna raise your hand? Cambly pays between 10 and $12 an hour. So if we need to make $11,000, okay, let's put that number in, divided by 20 hours, five, that is by $20, mm -mm, it's not $20 an hour. $11,000 divided by $12 per hour, 900 hours, okay, 916 hours on Cambly. This is on, in addition to, right, this is if you're using Cambly to make extra money, right, 916 hours on Cambly. How many weeks are we away? May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. Nine months is 36 weeks, divided by 36. 25 hours per week on Cambly. 916 hours, which is 25 hours per week. That's a lot, okay? That's a lot. <laughs> but maybe Cambly isn't your only source of additional income, okay? Anybody here say Cambly? I mean, you can just charge it. <laughs> you can just charge it. But that money, it still has to come from somewhere. It has to come from somewhere at, at some point. You can just charge it. <laughs> Professor LCH. Okay? But this, this still, you have to pay it back. As a person who worked as a credit analyst, I feel qualified to say you still have to have the money. At some point, you can stretch out how long it takes you to pay back the money. But you still got to get, come up with the money right? Five hours a day is too much for that, okay? So Cambly is probably not going to be the only thing, but it can be a thing. I mean, yeah, not the only thing, but a, a way, right? Not the only way, but a way. We're going to put some things together, okay? But that's a thing that I have done for money, tutoring people in English online. And if it's a thing that you're doing for extra money or for, to live, doesn't have to be for extra money, then I think I have calculated that 916 hours will cover your uh, trip. Nia, I didn't realize Cambly paid so low. This is why we talk so much about getting your skills, getting really clear on your actual skill set, because we have money making skill sets, right? When you do a thing like Cambly, it's because it's easy to get started, it doesn't take a whole lot of prep work. No marketing involved. But somebody here has a skill set that is worth way more than $12 an hour, right? I'm a house sitter, and I help other people become a house sitter, and I get way more than $12 an hour. A 30-minute call with me is $80.
right? A 30 minute call with me is $80. And that's not charging enough because I still get no shows. I had a no show just yesterday. I'm in a conference. I took time away from the conference to come sit at this desk and do a one-on-one -on -one call because somebody, a couple of people snuck through my calendar. My calendar has been, I, I set my calendar up wrong somehow. So even though I was supposed to have the weekend off for the conference, two different people, one yesterday and one today, snuck through. So I get up from the conference session, come up here to do this $80 half an hour coaching session, no show. Okay? So $80 tells me, that tells me, having no shows tells me I'm still not charging enough. Okay? <laughs> That's what that's the moral of the story. Still not charging enough money, right? So $80 an hour. Let's do that, right? A thing that you can do for $80 an hour, if you need $11,000 divided by 80, that's 137 hours over 36 weeks divided by 36 weeks, right? Four hours per week. Four hours per week. Now, being a coach doesn't mean that coaching clients fall into your lap. So just because I offer coaching sessions doesn't mean that coaching clients fall into my lap. I have to market them. I market them through my YouTube channel. If you have a business and you just need more clients who are willing to pay your rates, I recommend YouTube as a marketing strategy. Perfect timing for you as well because the YouTube Success Challenge starts May 15th. I host a five-day challenge called YouTube Success Five-Day Challenge, where I teach you how to get YouTube on your side. Just like you found me because YouTube understood that you would like me, and YouTube recommended you to me. Some of you this week, some of you this year, some of you three years ago, right? YouTube said, I think you would like Stephanie. Based on other things that you watch on YouTube, I think you would like Stephanie, okay? Uh, if you want to learn that for yourself, so that you can pay for your Cape Town trip or your two months, not Cape Town, for your two months in sub-Saharan Africa living well <laughs> and boycotting winter, all right? Join me on the YouTube Success 5-Day Challenge. You can sign up for it now at vicarious.com slash challenge. I'm going to try to put that link on the screen. I don't know where it is. Okay, here, vicarious.com slash challenge. Okay. I have hosted this challenge for two years now, going on two years. And uh, my students, oh, I didn't finish the sentence. This challenge starts on May, May 15th, okay? Uh, my students are doing well. Halisi and Rick, who are my students um, from Our Black Utopia, they put out a video a couple weeks ago that now has 200,000 views. <laughs> Secretly viral, okay? Um, Ashley in Africa, one of my first students to have like a, a major video just blow up on her, right? Um, I, I coach things because I've learned how to do things and I want you to know how to do those things, okay? And the YouTube Success Challenge is where I teach you how, just like today, I'm teaching you how I search for flights, right? <laughs> and how I find places to stay and how I set the budget, and how I come up with the money for the trip, right? Uh, I also, in the YouTube Success Challenge, I teach you how to get YouTube's algorithm to recommend you to the right people. So if you do a thing, right? Charisma, I charge, I charge $125 an hour, okay? And that's not the, that's not the end price, right? <laughs> that's the price today, right? That's not tomorrow's price, right? If you do a thing, if you have a skill set, and someone would pay you to teach them your thing. Give it a solid dollar figure and market your thing on YouTube, which is what Charisma does. Charisma, also my student, right? Also my YouTube success student, who I will take all future, uh, all credit for in the future, <laughs> right? Um, if you are, anyone here do some sort of consulting and feel okay sharing their rate, may not be hourly, it may be project-based, seriously, Black women, okay? We have expertise. So something like Cambly, okay? Good because you get a quick start. Good because you don't have to market anything. Good because it doesn't take a whole lot. It's just conversation. It doesn't take a whole lot of brain power and stress. I don't mean to down, I don't want to talk down, right? I, when, when, when I say it doesn't take a lot of brain power, I mean, it doesn't drain you, right? 
some of the work that you do. Some of you do diversity and inclusion work and it's draining you, right? Whereas Cambly is sitting and talking to a person in Turkey in English, right? <laughs> and being like, yes, that is how you say that, right? <laughs> right. Uh, we don't, but we don't want to do, we don't want to pick, we don't want to pick a thing that we do for money um, just based on what I say. You want to pick a thing based on what you actually want to do, what you, how you actually want to spend your time. Okay? Thank you for this. Samantha. Hi, Samantha Gregory. Oh, Tech BFF. Hi. I have a consulting business. I signed a $10,000 client in March. Okay? So we, this $10 an hour Cambly thing, are you playing yourself Right? Are you playing yourself by coaching for $10 an hour in Cambly when you have a skill set that people will pay you solid money for? Right? Um, if you have the time and the energy to do some marketing of your business, there's better money out there. Okay? I don't want to talk. I'm not talking bad about Cambly. When I needed Cambly, they were there for me. Okay. <laughs> when I needed some, to make some money to be able to spend my $16 a night on a hostel bed, right? they were there for me. Okay. But we have a skill set that is worth money. So we go out and we make our money doing these, doing our thing. Okay. Mary Goff, I don't do consulting, but I get several, several requests for private conversations. Maybe I should start. If you want. Mary, you're retired, girl. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy retirement, okay? I'm not here to push anybody into doing things. What I'm saying is that if you want to make some extra money, choose the thing that is going to give you the most money for the least work. Most money for the least work. And it could be because you already have a solid skill set that people are willing to pay good money for. Right. Or it could be, you know, to me, the, it could be you could be a person for whom the most money for the least work is ten dollars an hour on Cambly because you don't have to do any other stuff. You turn your computer on, you turn your computer off. End of it. OK. OK. <laughs> Dahlia appreciates your info. OK. So Yvette says these prices are absurd. This is antithetical. Antithetical. Yes to saving for a move abroad or a longer sabbatical. Everyone is not doing this. I am not saving for a move abroad. I know a good 100 women who just met us in, in, in Morocco. Uh, a good, not, not all 100, but a good portion of those women had the money to stay in Portugal or Morocco. Some of, some of the other women are still traveling around Morocco for a while. Not everyone need, is in budget mode. Some of us are in whatever not budget mode, business class mode, right? I have an audience of women who are at different places, in different financial places, who are in different mental places. Some of us just don't have, some of y'all just don't have the mental bandwidth to do things on a budget. It costs you more mentally to do it on a budget. I'm going to spend my money. Black women have spent their careers making money and want to spend the money. I have never purported to be only a budget travel channel. I've, just because I've talked about budget travel significantly doesn't mean that this is a space only for budget travel. This is a travel also for the women who want to spend $20,000 in two months living their lives in Mauritius on a beach, right? This is also a place for her. This is also a place for women who are like, I got it, I'ma use it, okay? <laughs> don't, don't misunderstand what this is about, right? I, am, I have traveled on a bus. I, I traveled for a full year on less money than, I'm just, than we just came up with for this trip, <laughs> right? A full year, okay? I slept in beds right next to strangers. I pooped in a trash can for two weeks because the people didn't have running water they had a composting toilet that they made themselves out of a dumpster, okay? But I have also flown business class, baby. <laughs> I stayed at the JW Marriott. <laughs> I've rented out an entire Riyadh in Morocco. I rented out an entire Riyadh in Morocco for me and my homegirls, 
okay? We do what we want with our money, um, and we move the way we move the way it feels right for us at the time, right? So I'm a house sit. I went from renting out a private Riyadh to house sitting in a, a two couple weeks time. I got a house sit coming up in a few weeks. <clears throat> Mix it up. We move how we want, um, and not not everyone on this channel needs to save save budget budget. Some of y'all got it. Okay. <laughs> Let me help you spend it. <laughs> Some of y'all got it though, right? You're the director of this and the PhD of that, and you're the this, and you you went, to, you know, you got the this degree and the that degree. Okay. I can't, I'm not gonna force you. I'm not about to force y'all to be on a budget. I'm not going to be on a budget. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> no, I disagree, Charisma. You're not horrible at budgeting. If you were horrible at budgeting, you would always be out of money, right? You have what you need. There's just a different, different, there are different, Adelia teaches that there are different ways to view the budget. Everybody, you're, everybody's living on a budget. Right. Everybody has a pool of money that they're pulling from to live their lives. Everybody's on a budget. So you're not horrible at it. You just do it a different way. You just do it a way that's not the way that is. Yeah. Right. You just you, you're agreeing with me. You just do it at a, in a way that's not the way that is traditionally taught. But you're doing it probably the way Adelia teaches, which is like live your life. <laughs> Adelia is picky girl travels the world. All right. So if you need a different approach, if you're a person who is like so sick of the budgeting advice and you just need to make sure you have a handle on the money, you know where it's coming from and where it's going, Picky Girl Travels the World, right? She's the person. She's the channel that will teach you these things. Okay, Erica? <laughs> you got it, right? <laughs> Erica, I got it. I, I'm going to use it. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I know that I spent a lot of time talking about budget travel. I had to travel on a budget, okay? Until my YouTube channel started supporting me and my coaching business and the summit, right? Until those things kicked in, your girl was on a budget, okay? <laughs> your girl slept next to strangers, men and women, because some places the dorm rooms were mixed, okay? Your girl had to, had to house sit to get free accommodation. <laughs> Right. But that's not the aim of this channel. I don't want I'm not here to put black women in the budget travel box. Live. My mom says live, sister, live. OK, I want you to live. OK, do what you can do within your means can change like that. It changed for me. What is within my means changed like that once I tapped into my skill set and learned how to market what I do. Once I learned how to market House Sitter School, the Exodus Summit itself, Rashida and I learned how to market the summit and learned how to set an <laughs> appropriate price. I watched Rashida's video on how to run a summit not too long ago, and she talked about how the first summit was free. It'll never be free again, right? <laughs> Once we did the things that, I, that we teach together and I teach separately and she teaches separately. Once I did those things, I broke out that budget box. All right. So thank you, friends, for sharing what your um, consulting, what consulting looks like for you. Anyone else want to share what? what it looks like, what, what the money looks like. Once you decide, I'm gonna, I have a skill set and I'm going to offer this skill set to people, aside from my job, aside from a salary. Anybody else want to share that? Y'all have an expertise. Don't get, well, I don't, some, some of you get caught up on the word expertise. Y'all have a skill set. You got a skill set. You have a thing that people will pay you to learn from them. Um, so do it. <laughs> get out there. Get out there. Okay. I'm scrolling to see if anyone else shared theirs. Okay. But I was scrolling a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you did share your consulting income thing 
I'm sorry, I missed it, but thank you for sharing if you did. Okay, Anissa says she did, A-N-I-S-S. -S. Let me scroll back up, okay. Let me find it. I do work, I do work sprints so that I can rest. My biggest contract, oh wait, I'm, going, I'm reading backwards. Okay, let me read <laughs> front to back. Okay, Anissa, an hour consulting session with me was $175 last year. My price just went up significantly. And you're also in the diversity inclusion equity space, is that right, Anissa? I think so, I think so. Uh, my consulting rate has been 175 to 280 per hour, but I'm moving away from hourly right? My biggest contract so far was $84,000. That is years <laughs> in, in, in Mauritius, okay? <laughs> That's a year. That's two years in Mauritius for one contract, okay? That $84,000 contract was part-time over a few months, okay? And I think diversity. Let's see. Work six months, rest six months. I love it. All right. Okay. Your skill set <clears throat> that you already have is worth money, right? Uh, so if you're already offering it out in the world and you just need to market it, join my YouTube success challenge at vicarious.com slash challenge. If you're not yet, if, you, if it's not yet out in the world, Rashida and I host the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge the end of maybe the first week in June, early June. I'm going to go with the first week in June. We're hosting the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge for those of you who have, an, have a thing that you can offer out in the world. You're just not doing it yet. The Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge is, is a challenge on getting in front of other people's audiences that already exist and telling them about your service or your product, whereas the YouTube Success Challenge is building your own audience. I do both, right? They're both levers that I pull. Just last week, I spoke at a summit called Reinvent Your Life After 40, hosted by Melina, right? Um, I, those, those are both levers that I pull. I get in front of other people's audiences, but I also grow my own audience here on YouTube, uh, which is why I can write down a $20,000 figure for two months and be like, okay, well, let me figure out how to make that, right? It's a, once, you ha once your income is separated from a job, it's, there's a different way to approach money, right? It's just like, oh, 20,000, I just told you, $20,000 for me was like four hours per week of additional coaching, right? Add in four hours per week of coaching sessions, done. Um, it was 3.6 or 3.8 hours per week. I'm trying to get the link for the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge up on the screen as well. So the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge is a good complement to the YouTube Success Challenge, but I wouldn't do them both, we, even though we're hosting them kind of back to back. I wouldn't necessarily do them both back to back unless, no, I wouldn't do them both back to back, okay? So YouTube Success Challenge, to learn YouTube marketing, to grow your own audience, get your next three clients challenge, to learn how to get in front of other people's already existing audiences to offer your product service thing. Okay? Yeah. Tracy, as business owners and entrepreneurs, we're experts at figuring things out. That's right. I'm going to figure it out, right? 20K? Okay. I'm going to figure it out. Right? Okay, so what did we talk about in terms of the money? Let me get back on my notes. We talked about Cambly, right? Which is easy to start, no marketing, and less stressful. We talked about your own consulting thing, right? Your own business, which may already exist and may not already exist, right? Putting yourself out, your skill set out into the world, onto the, onto the free market, right? Uh, let's talk about a couple of things from the summit. Exodus Summit 2022 was called Move Abroad Money.
because we brought in speakers to help you make move abroad money. Anyone Airbnb in their home? Seriously, serious question. One of the sessions in Exodus Summit 2022 was how to Airbnb your home while you travel. Right? You don't, we're not talking about going out and buying another place or renting out another place to put on Airbnb. We're talking about making money from the home you're already paying for. It's already there. You already live in. Um, our speaker, Pamela, Pam Holt, um, tapped into the business travel audience or business traveler, business traveler, uh, and was able to charge more for her home than she expected and made $50,000 the first year on Airbnb only while she and her daughters were traveling, right? Like, like she didn't rent out her home. Like we looked at some rooms. She didn't just rent out a room on Airbnb every day, right? She rented out her home, but only while they were on vacations, right? A few weeks out of the year, earned her $50,000 the first year. I looked up my old address. There's a site called AirDNA, AirDNA. And I looked up my old address in Wilmington, and they're telling me they ex would expect a 40% occupancy rate and 215 I think, $215 a night. I know that's overstated, right? I know that's overstated. But $215 a night divided by, what is our number? $11,600 divided by 215. 54 nights to get the extra money, right? Could I get 54 nights if I still had that home, right? Could I get... Uh, could I get 54 nights of bookings on Airbnb in the place I'm already living in in order to make that money for that trip? Okay? Don't sleep on the Airbnb for those of you who already live in a place. I don't already live in a place. I don't live anywhere, so I can't. Airbnb is not an option for me yet. When I get to Costa Rica and get a, get a home, possibly. Okay, let's see. Jesse, I do midterm rentals to nurses only. Midterm as in, like their nursing contracts usually, what, like two or three months? Yeah, people love renting out to travel nurses. Anyone else doing Airbnb yet? You are. Anita, do you want to tell us any dollar figure? Like, what is your profit per night? Right. So I let so let's say I did rent that place out for two fifteen. I'm going to have to pay taxes on the money and I'm going to have to pay a housekeeper to come in and clean or cleaner to come and clean after. Uh, I might even have to pay someone to like be on call in case there's an emergency or whatever. So I would expect the two fifteen. Right. So that's not the real figure. Uh, so anyone have a real figure on what they're doing? On Airbnb, like a real dollar Airbnb figure? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Well, I Air, it is an option. It is a, a real profit maker for people who already live in a place, right? Already are close to places where people are coming for travel. Like if you live near a hospital and doctors are always coming and going or you live near a university, or a convention center, or something, right? I think Pam li Pam's home is kind of near a convention center. I think that's how she got in on the business traveler market. In Exodus Summit 2022, she told us about it. I'm going to link to the replays for Exodus Summit 2022. If putting a home on Airbnb sounds like something that uh, you would want to do, Go ahead and get your replay ticket to Exodus Summit 2022. Every single session is worth the price of the ticket, right? So you only need one session to seem helpful for you before you sign up for it to be worth the money. Every single session on there is worth the price of the ticket. And so Angela is already, so Angela has a home that has a guest house attached and already has it on Airbnb, uh, expanding now to include direct corporate short-term stays to bypass Airbnb fees. Do you feel comfortable giving a dollar figure for like one night? What's the profit? You don't have to, okay? You, no pressure. But if anyone could give us a real dollar figure on like what their nightly profit is, right? Per night, how much of that is, is 
profit. How much of that can go towards two months in Africa? Okay. Anybody have that figure? Okay. Thanks. Naturally, Nikisha. I'm glad. Okay. Okay. All right. So Airbnb was another option that I wrote down. What else did I wrote down, write down? Oh, we had a session on phone sex and feet pics. Feet pics to me, I couldn't figure out. So every, okay. At the meetup in Morocco, a woman pulled me to the side and said, I am at this meetup because I sold feet pics and other pics. I think she's not only selling feet pics, she's selling some body pics as well. I sold some pictures on the internet and I made enough money to bring myself to Morocco. Okay, so that's why we had the session. She also got a raise. So she also got a pay raise on her, on her day job because we had a session on negotiation, on uh, three secrets to earning the salary you deserve for black women, right? And we had a session on fee picks, phone sex, right? I think Danny told us $2.99 per minute for phone sex. Anybody know that figure? I'm a, I wrote down $2.99 per minute and I believe that's what she told us, okay, for beginners. So we're talking, we need $11,600, and we're going to make $2.99 per minute. That is 3,880 minutes. Divide that by 60, that is 60, 65 hours of work over the next, what was it, 36 weeks? 65 hours of work over 36 weeks, two hours a week, <laughs> two hours a week of phone sex to spend two months in Africa. Y'all sleep on those sessions if you want to, okay? <laughs> sleep on Exodus Summit 2022 if you want to. Was my number right? Is my, am I, am I, anybody check my math? Okay. This is why I, instead of saying let's fit into the budget category, I'm saying let's figure out how to make the money to live the life we want. Uh, this is why. I hope I didn't come across as flippant when I started talking about the money. I know $11,000 is a lot of money. OK, what I'm saying is I know women who are making eleven thousand dollars <laughs> with the exact same skill set you have. That's what I mean. Maybe that, that maybe I've said it better this time than I said it the first time. I'm saying <laughs> money is out there. Uh, and you have the skill set to make it. OK. Okay, so Angela says Airbnb, our monthly Airbnb is somewhere around $1,700 before fees. Going direct with corporate clients would double that with no fees. Okay, thank you, Angela. All right, $1,700 a month though. So how many months would it take to make $11,700? $11,600. I keep going back because it's $6,25. $11,625. $11,600, we'll do that now, divided by $1,700. 6.8 months of Airbnb, right? At Angela's rate, at Angela's pay, right? To cover that trip. Okay? Yeah. The money's there and the skill set that you need, you probably have. You just got to tap into it. Or, or learn a new skill set. Learning how to do an Airbnb is a new skill set, right? Okay? All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Minnie sent us screenshots of her accounts and it was bonkers. Minnie is a, but Minnie is a corporation. Okay. Minnie has people working for her doing things. She has assistants and people. I don't know what, I don't know what their titles are. She has people doing things for her, but she's making amazing money in the virtual, virtual sex workspace. And I believe she's still in Mexico. I don't, last I heard, she was just in Mexico. She's like, Mexico is great. I'm like, girl, it is. <laughs> it is. 
It is, okay? Yeah, right? So that's, that's the approach I'm taking. How do we make the money that we need to live the life that we want? You can take the approach of here's how much money I have. Now, how can I live? Right? And I did that. I did that for the first couple of years of non-job life. It was, here's how much I have. What can I afford? I can afford to house it. (laughs) And I can afford to go to the grocery store. Right? But knowing that what your skill set is money, the things that you already know how to do, that it's money. And then being able to make that money and then live, being able to say, I want to, I need to make $20,000. How do I make an extra $20,000 over the next seven months? Life changing, life changing, right? Life changing. Okay. So when y'all hear me saying, uh, I, cause I keep saying, I'm going to stop doing those $80 coaching calls for probably over a year now. I've said, I'm going to stop doing them. But when you hear me say, I've opened up my calendar, <laughs> It's because $20,700 divided by 80, divided by 80 is 258 coaching calls, right? (laughs) 258 coaching calls over the next nine months. 30 calls a month. I don't like that number. So that's not going to be the sole source of the income, right? You know, I, I, YouTube is paying me, but it's not going to be the sole source of the income, but it could be a source. And back to the 11,600 divided by 80, 145 coaching calls, nine months, 16 calls a month, right? Every, this four calls a week. So <laughs> we work on the things. Ah, um, okay, good. Yes, plan it out. Plan it out. Plan out your content creation calendar. <laughs> yes. Plan out your content creation calendar. Okay. AI can now provide feed pics. Right? Do what you got to do. Minnie, no, was it Minnie or Danny? One of them's Danny. So Danny does phone sex. And when they ask for a picture, she just gives them somebody else's picture who they've agreed A person who she, I think she pays that woman for her photos, right? But they have agreed. Danny writes stories, like erotic stories for her, for clients, if they want. And sometimes they want a photo to go along with the story. And so she has like a, I think she said, talked about this in the summit. And there's a woman, he wanted a redhead. So she reached out to a redhead model and was like, hey, how much for some pictures, right? Like these are business enterprises, Okay. Nyrell says, please hit the like button. So please hit the like button, friends. Okay. As a YouTube coach, YouTube does value. I know this. Okay. YouTube does put extra value into, or does, it it gives YouTube a whole lot of good data when you hit the like button. You're telling YouTube, I think somebody else would enjoy watching this, right? I recommend this to other people like me. Hitting the like button does help. Engagement on my videos is significantly helpful. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. All right. Lisa D says tarot card, tarot card reading can be lucrative everywhere I travel. I find clients looking for reading mobile. Yes. International. I charge 10 to $20 per question and $30 for a 10 card reading. All right. Your skill set is worth money. Put it out in the world and market it. Yeah. Her OnlyFans alone. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Okay. So we're not going to act like there's no money out in the world. Okay. We're not going to act like that. This is something I could do, writing and talking. So we had a session in Exodus Summit on freelance writing. Anyone here want to share what they are making per article? Or something. Freelance writers are a little. um, Well, freelance writers do share. There's a site I use called Who Pays Writers. It's not always updated, but there's a site called Who Pays Writers, which tells you how much these sites pay per article. Uh, I said I needed to close things out, but I do want to show you this. Freelance writers. 
or people want to be freelance writers or whatever. Uh, who, this is a site that where people report what different magazines and blogs and sites pay for their articles. I know this number, right? So XO Nicole, I think, is $50 per article. Okay, so this is 500 words. Oh, 2017. This is really old. 500 words, 5 cents per word. Uh, but that may not be recent. Uh, who's in here recently? AARP? Anything? 2020. So some, yeah, some people don't, it's not a place that people go and update regularly. 2020, AARP was paying $3 for, per word for a 1,200 word article, but it took them more than three months to get paid. Uh, what's a travel magazine that we know? Uh, I can't think of anything right now. Let's go back to the main, to the homepage and see what's in here that we can recognize. I'm stalling in case a freelance writer thrive. I think is that one is the Huffington post is the art is the magazine owned by Ariana Huffington. Is that right? Thrive, 800 word feature, 16 cents per word, paid in one month. 16 cents times 800, $128, all right? So, feet picks are, feet picks are more lucrative, I think. But maybe not, maybe not, okay? Maybe just these, these places aren't the places that are paying well. Bourbon, a dollar per word? A dollar twenty-five for Haiku magazine, a thousand-word story at a dollar twenty-five per word. Heavy investigating. Okay, right. So, any let's see if we got a any update on the freelance writing money. The session we had a session. The reason I'm asking that question specifically is that we had a session uh, by Jessica Poitvien on freelance writing and pitching. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So back to your skill set. In the summit, what I learned, as a person who don't even want a job, what I learned from Exodus Summit 2022, which you can still watch the replays for at exodussummit.com, what I learned is to untether yourself from your job title, get a good handle on your skill set, and look for work in that skill set. Whether you're looking for remote work, or contract or work that you can do on your own terms and then you know work six months off six months, right? Or whatever, whatever you're looking for. The secret is to get a clear handle on your skill set and learn how to search for jobs with those skill sets, with those skill requirements, as opposed to those job titles. So Libria has been talking on her Instagram about instructional design lately. I don't understand. I really don't get it. I don't know what it is. But for some of you, you're like, oh, yeah, that's what I do. Right. It's just not I don't it's not called instructional design. So I didn't think about it. Right. I, what she taught me and Jessica taught me and Team Zekas taught me during the summit, it taught us, is that the job title is kind of pinning you, boxing you in. Get a clear handle on the skill set, the skills that you have. And the results that you've been able to get in, in work on your projects. And that should be driving your job searches, not the job titles. Libria and Jessica and Sojourner, who talked about um, remote social work jobs, all of them sat down and searched, and just like I searched just now and showed you how I use momondo.com right? They sat down and showed you how to find the jobs for you um, that are not just looking for remote social work, right? Remote whatever, whatever your job title is. How to find the things based on the skills that you have. I'm telling you, Exodus Summit 2022 is the gift that keeps on giving, okay? Go ahead and watch. Get your replay ticket if you don't have it to Exodus Summit 2022. These Black women came in here to get you paid, they came to the summit to get you some money. So we've got these two big figures for 20, for two months in Southern Africa. Make the money. 
If you saw those Airbnbs and you were like, oh, yes, that's me. I deserve. I want a month in Mauritius on that expensive ass island with that pool. I want it. Get the money. Go to ExodusSummit.com. Get your replay ticket. Pick a session. Watch the session. Implement what she teaches you in the session. You don't have to... um, You don't have to feel like, oh, I got to put together five different ways to make the money. You can. I like income rivers, though, as opposed to income streams. I like a river. Give me a flood of money. I have a river of income related to house sitting. And that sounds ridiculous because I don't even get paid to house sit. My river of income comes from me having a skill set that involves me teaching people how to become a house sitter. Right? That is how this, you, my YouTube channel makes money. That is how my coaching business makes money. That is how the virtual summit makes money because I am a house sitter. Get you a river of income. Go to exodussummit.com. Find a thing that's your thing. <laughs> find a thing. I don't care if it's feet pics. I don't care if it's freelance writing. I don't care if it's Airbnb in your home or YouTubing coaching, teaching online, real estate, charisma taught real estate, investing without being a landlord. I don't care which one of those sessions. I don't care which one. I don't care which one. Get one. Get to, get a, And get into it. Get into it. Get, to, get this money. Minnie says that all the time. Let's get this money. <laughs> Let's get this money. I've seen a lot of questions about virtual assistant work. I think the sessions, for those of you who want to start virtual assistant work, I think surprisingly the freelance writing session will be really helpful. Virtual assistants need to know how to pitch themselves. Virtual assistants need to know how to get clients, right? Virtual assistants need to know a skill set, a thing that you can do for people, and you need to know how to get clients. So I would go to Jessica's session on freelance writing. If you're trying to start a virtual assistant business, I would go to Team Zika's session on negotiation. It's really secrets to earning the salary you deserve, but she taught some negotiation and some skill set stuff in there that would also be helpful for a, for a virtual assistant or a virtual assistant to be. We didn't have a, sp- a speaker come in and teach virtual assistant business stuff, but there are women who teach that all over the internet. Um, I learned it from a woman. I was a virtual assistant, right, when I was first starting house sitting. Uh, and I, Virtual Assistant Savvies was the name of the Facebook group. I don't remember her name, but she had a Facebook group called Virtual Assistant Savvies, and that's where I learned virtual assistant work. Okay, so that's it. Decide on the things that you want for yourself and then make the money to get it. (laughs) If you want two months in Africa, I'm not here to tell you you shouldn't have two months in Africa. I'm here to tell you how to make the money to have two months in Africa where you're not sweating money, right? So what did we, so the things on my list, Airbnb in your home, being a consultant in whatever your area of expertise is, uh, freelancing, Cambly, phone sex, YouTube, house sitting. We didn't even talk about house sitting yet. How did we not talk about house sitting yet? So house sitting is not only a way to travel, But house sitting is a way for you to get your travel money up. If you already, if if you don't, if you, if you could house it full time and not have to pay for your apartment. So let's say your lease is up or you could sublet or your home is on Airbnb and you house sat even though you're not getting paid to house it, you're making a profit because you're not paying for your accommodation, right? Right now, I'm not house sitting. I'm paying for this Marriott and breakfast buffet is $36. I hate it. I hate it here. I hate it in the paying for accommodation space. I can't wait. I have a house sit starting May 21st. I can't wait, Right? So what house sitting means to me is I don't have to pay rent. Every month I house sit is a month I don't have to pay rent. If your rent is more than, let's see, $11,600, and we talked about, let's go with June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. 
that's this many, eight months. I don't know, I couldn't get it right. Okay, divided by eight months. If your rent is $14.50 or more, house sitting full time, which you know is not a simple thing, but house sitting full time instead of paying that rent, that's twenty thousand. That's uh, eleven thousand six hundred dollars. That's two months in Africa, right? House sitting, even though you're not being paid for the house sits, you're just getting free accommodation. That free accommodation is money, right? It's as real as any other money, right? If 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 money in the bank is real, then free accommodation is real. So get my new house sitter toolkit at Vicarious. Oh, actually, that's not the link. <laughs> Hold on. Give me a second. Get my new house sitter toolkit, houseit.vicarious.com slash toolkit. Okay. If you're in a position where you could house sit and not have to pay for a place to stay, either because you've sublet or Airbnb it out or your lease is just up and you're going to go house sit plus maybe stay with some family in between house sits. Right. House sitting, house sitting is a legitimate way to get the money up to live out your dream in Mauritius. <laughs> Our dream, the dream I gave you <laughs> in Mauritius. OK. OK. All right. So don't forget house sitting. It's even though it's free accommodation, that free accommodation translates to money, money you're not spending on your accommodation. Fairly fast. I didn't have to pay rent for 13 years. That's amazing. Now I'm going to try to do Airbnb with my land. Okay, good, right? Take advantage of your advantages. <laughs> Use the resources that are there for you. House sitting is a resource that's there for you, right? So we talk about house sitting as a way to travel on a budget, but house sitting is also a way to make up, make up, make the money, to earn or make, not earn money, but to not have to spend money, which you can then save and then use for other things. Hi, Rashida. I'm planning after Cape Town to spend a month in Mauritius in luxury. <laughs> and no, I'm not planning to meet up in Mauritius. Y'all might see me there. It's a small island. If y'all are going to be there, you might see me there. But you're going to see me doing nothing. <laughs> I'm going to be on Mauritius doing nothing. I don't think Fiji is going to happen this year based on calendar things. So I'm going to make up for it. I'm going to be in Mauritius for a month doing nothing. Okay? So house sitting saves you money, and it's real money. It's just as real as whatever. If you tell me that your paycheck is real money, then so is the house sitting saving money. Right? It's, it's all the same. Okay? Oh, so wait, that went by real fast. So now I was a resident manager for five years and didn't pay rent at all. Resident manager as in, do you mean like on a college campus or are you talking about in an apartment complex? I've never really thought about that as a way to not pay for accommodation. That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. Yeah, the meetup is in Joshua Tree on May 13th. If you're in the Exodus Summit Facebook group, there is a thing there. So get on, get in the Exodus Summit Facebook group at exodussummit.com slash community. If you're planning to come to the Joshua Tree meetup, right, find that meetup and RSVP for it. May 13th, Joshua Tree. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I know. I think Kimani is still looking on the look, looking for the look. Either she's still looking for the location or I just, I haven't gotten an update on her from where we're meeting. But it's best that I don't know. Because I don't want to announce it on YouTube out in front of the world. A small apartment complex. Okay, prop I never I never realized that that was a way to not pay rent. All right? We're out here. We're out here figuring things out, right? Dia, Mauritius is one of my dream travel stays. I just popped in here and funny you mentioned it. Not funny, girl. It's it's meant to be. I was just wondering why no one was talking about that place. I'm talking about it. <laughs> it's meant to be. It's meant to be. We started off talking about how Mauritius has the one-year uh, remote worker visa, uh, which is free. A free visa for remote workers to come and stay in Mauritius for a year. Uh, so I'm gonna, I want to go for the month so I can talk about it. So that I can explain to people how amazing Mauritius is. So that y'all can go. But you don't have to wait on me. I'm not saying wait on me. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So we did what we needed to do. I have breakfast at nine o'clock for this conference I'm in. Uh, and it's nine. It's four minutes to nine. So let me get myself downstairs to the conference for breakfast. All right. Um, I hope, yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope what seeing me come out with, come up with the numbers, right. And then come up with ways to get the number. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope it didn't scare you off. It was a big number. Okay. But we live in, <laughs> and we have ways to make the money. If the big numbers uh, for the two months in sub-Saharan Africa were too big, remember, you can cut them down. But also remember, you can just find ways to make that money. I'm down with that. I'm down with coming up with a number and then just making that number. Find ways to make the money because hard work doesn't equal more money. Just because you need to make more money doesn't need you, mean you need to work harder, right? We're working on ways to make more money for less work. That's the goal, Okay. All right, friends, I'll see you again. I know I see you guys are still leaving information in the comments. I didn't realize that um, I didn't realize that that was a thing. Maybe one of you will email me at Stephanie at vicarious.com and we can talk about it. We can talk about you being an apartment complex manager and not having to pay rent. OK, so thank you very much for that. I know we're going to Fiji. We're going to Fiji sometime. I just don't think it's going to be this year. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it this year. I don't think so, based on calendars. Time moves so fast. It's May. Time is moving so fast. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to time. But I think time is going to move so fast that I'm not going to make it to Fiji this year. But it's still, it's, it's going to happen, okay? It's going to happen. But instead, I'm going to do the things I wanted to do in Fiji. I'm going to do them in Mauritius in, Feb in May March and live. We're going to live. We're going to live. Okay. All right, friends. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm glad it was helpful. Thank you for joining in. Always, as always, thank you for participating and for being so kind to one another in the chat and for being so kind to me in the chat. Thank you for hitting the like button. Uh, and thank you very much for, uh, for being here and being so gracious and kind to this community. Thank you for being this community. All right, friends. I'll see you again. I got to go to the conference and conference. <laughs> Learn things, learn things so I can make this money. I need to make $20,000. I got to go to this book publishing conference so I can make this money. Okay. Bye friends.